Welcome back to the Your Houston Podcast. This is your host, Mario Castillo. Be sure to like and subscribe to catch up with all our latest videos. Today, we're going to be tackling management districts and economic development, something that can be a little abstract, but impacts quality of life in so many ways. We have Rebecca Reyna, Executive Director of the Greater Northside Management District, Alice Lee, Director of the Southwest Management District and partner with Halls Hill and Associates, and Alan Bernstein, the VP of Public Relations and Communications for Halls Hill and Associates. So we're gonna get straight to this topic because we don't want to waste any time. We're really excited to welcome a all-star lineup of guests today to talk about management districts and economic development. We have with us Rebecca Reyna, the Executive Director of the Greater Northside Management District. We have Alice Lee, the Executive Director for the Southwest Management District and a partner with Halls Hill and Associates. And we have Alan Bernstein, the Director of Public Affairs and Communications for Halls Hill Associates. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. So we're going to kick off the episode with our liftoff segment where we'll get into some rapid fire questions and uh, get everything uh, going that way. And then we'll go into our, our main topic. I feel the liftoff. The clock has started. All right. Here. All right so for, for three folks, we're just going to go in order. We'll start with Alice, then go to Rebecca, and then go to Alan. So Alice. You have uh, one restaurant you can go to tonight. Where are you going to go in Houston and what are you going to order? Wow, that's a good question because Alan and I, you know, we, we try to dine at all the new restaurants that pop up in Southwest District. Uh, I'm eager actually to go back to Fung's Kitchen. Unfortunately, it suffered a kitchen fire. So I'm very eager to go back there. I've never been there, but I've heard great things. I didn't realize they had a, a fire. Um, so that's another reason to go support them if, if they're back up and open. Yeah. Uh, Rebecca, what's your favorite state besides Texas? Mm-hmm. Oh, besides Texas? Yep. Um, you know, I guess New Mexico. We spent a lot of time there and really enjoy it. Um, we, we go there, we tend to vacation there a lot and hopefully to retire there one day. So I would say New Mexico. Is that the enchantment state? Is that what they call New Mexico? Yeah, land okay. Of Encha- land of enchantment. Land of enchantment. Well, you have been enchanted by New Mexico. Yeah. Um, Alan, we're in a post-COVID world. Travel open. Countries are open. Where's the first place you want to go on vacation? Vietnam. Vietnam. Okay. Wow. Yes. Um, I've, I've been fortunate to hit several on my bucket list, uh, but... Um, I've been fascinated by Vietnam because getting to know a lot of the very warm and very smart uh, people from Vietnam or descended from people who are from Vietnam. Uh, I am totally addicted to Vietnamese food. And having seen um, a lot of photos and watched a lot of films about Vietnam, it looks absolutely beautiful and fascinating. So um, I'm ready to go. I I would agree with everything you just said. And I've never been, I remember watching the, the Anthony Bourdain on Vietnam and being very intrigued by it. Um, back to Alice, what was the last book that you read? Oh, I'm, I'm really bad. I don't really have a lot of leisure time, so I can't really say which book I've read. I'm sorry. Okay, what about, or maybe an article? Either, <laughs> no problem. No problem at all. Um, Rebecca, if you can book the next Rodeo Houston performance, who would you pick? Oh, La Mafia. Oh, La Mafia. Wow. La Mafia. <laughs> and they're That's... actually from Northside. Yep. So we're really proud of that. I would book them. Great answer. Um, Alan, if you could have a conversation with anyone past or present, who would you pick? Oh, my goodness. Uh, you mean dead or alive? Yep. Um, I would pick um, Martin Luther King because I just uh, got finished uh, with listening on audiobook to his letter from the Birmingham jail, which so many people reference, uh, and I'd never gotten around to reading or hearing. Uh, it's, I guess, about 60 pages in print. and uh, And he 
was arrested in one of his marches and uh, had a lot of time on his hands when he was in jail. Yeah. And, and, and wrote a letter to uh, the clergy, the black and white clergy at this very tumultuous time, and basically said that moderates uh, were um, in his target for criticism because people who say, yes, we're for your goals, but could you really just kind of dial it back and stop making demands? So we like you, but, um, mm, you know, maybe not the way you're going about things. Mm-hmm. Kind of went after them, but in this very eloquent way. Interesting how that could, that same framework could apply today. Absolutely. Um, okay. And then for our last, our last three questions, Alice, if you could describe Houston in one word, what would you describe it in? Welcoming. And it it absolutely is. It is a, a welcoming melting pot of a city. Um, Rebecca, in your opinion, what's the best donut shop in Houston? Of course, the North Side local uh, North Side icon Shipley's donut. You cannot beat them. I would have to agree. You have to. <laughs> um, and then Alan, what's your all-time favorite movie? Um. It's like asking me my who my favorite child is, even if I knew. I that. <laughs> so, um, so, uh, but my most recent favorite is Roma, the um, black and white autobiographical, highly impressionistic film about uh, the director growing up in Mexico City, uh, and it is absolutely gorgeous. And he rebuilt an entire neighborhood, you know, for the set from a neighborhood of Ro- called Roma that he grew up in in Mexico City. Wow. Okay. I haven't, haven't seen it or, or heard of it, but I will put that on my list to check out. Um, thank you all for, for indulging us in the lightning round there. So now we'll move on to our uh, topic for today, which is management districts and economic development. And This is something that for us as an organization, Your Houston, we focus on quality of life issues. Uh, This ties directly to that in so many ways, uh, but a a lot of our listeners probably haven't heard of a management district. So I think a great place to start is what is a management district? And and let's just go from there. Well, um, uh, the Houston area has, I think, more than half of the management districts in the whole state. And... um, it's kind of like a messier version of a checkerboard. They're here and there all across Houston. Uh, a management district is something created by the state under state law uh, when asked to do so by people in a contiguous neighborhood with identifiable boundaries that people there propose. And people from those neighborhoods, usually people in the business world who are property owners, ask for this to happen so that they can have an extra layer of government services, but one that is hyper-local, that is super responsive and transparent because it's run by a local board in that area, appointed by the mayor and approved by the city council in most cases, depending on where it's located. And the management district raises revenue by an infinitesimal uh, assessment on on property values of commercial property only, doesn't tax residents uh, or or businesses who do business there unless the businesses own the property. Then the board decides how to spend the money. It can't move forward without designing something called a service plan that the board can vote on, laying out what it wants to do. So what are those things it wants to do? It, It wants to help the city and the county make their area safer so it gets into public safety often in the Southwest Management District, for instance, where often by doing what that district does, where Alice really oversees uh, a extra HPD patrols uh, that, we, that the Management District pays for, plus hiring a private security company who the Management District hires, uh, and other measures that have to do with public safety. It also does economic development. What can be done to promote encourage and increase commerce in that area. The list goes on after that. I'll stop here pretty soon, but beautification of the Esplanades, erasing graffiti, picking up litter, um, 
uh, having an identifiable series of flags and banners to give the neighborhood an identity, outdoor art, uh, distribution of public health materials. I, I will add, so management districts are a political subdivision. And like Alan said, they're run by a volunteer group of a board of directors. The initial board is set up when the legislation is created, which is governed by chapter 375 of the local government code and chapter 49 of the water code. Um, so after that, boards are then um, verified through, they have to go through city council for verification. I know our board in Northside are all assessment payers. So there's nobody on a board that does not pay the, the assessment. Commercial property owners are an agent of a commercial property owner. Um, if it's not the actual property owner, we have an agent from, that represents that property. So our board is made up of that. And like Alan said, beautification project, the butterfly behind me, my, my thing is a um, on a lot in Northside that was um, vacant and weeded and had been um, even the, the council members from what 10 years ago were cleaning that lot. And we took it and created a pocket park. We leveraged funds through a grant with our partner, one of our community partners, Avenue CDC. And the artist rose toward with this beautiful butterfly stuff a be as a beautification project. So um, definitely a lot of a lot of things. And I think graffiti abatement, litter, um, I know we were talking earlier, Mario, and I, I said, like we've picked since the inception of our litter abatement project, we picked over 1.7 million tons of, wow. of illegal dumping sites. And I'm and when, sure- When did that I, start? I think that goes for all management districts. We pick up a lot, a lot of trash. So a, a slew of services can be provided by a management district that, that were just rattled off. They're created by the legislature. They have the ability to levy an assessment, and and that's only on commercial properties. Is that right? And then that's the money that's turned around to use to fund all of the operations of graffiti abatement, illegal dumping pickup. Do y'all uh, get involved in the homelessness area if homeless people are on commercial property? Is that something that impacts your work at all? I think that's a, a very relevant quality of life question right now. Uh, I think we've seen it more during COVID as most people have been able to, you know, and staying home, they feel isolated. So through the management district, if it's um, a homeless encampment or a trespasser walking on a private property, we still have to first get permission from that property owner uh, through their signing of a criminal trespass affidavit has to be notarized and then posted at their property uh, with the copy given to Houston Police Department so that anytime the property owner is not on site, as long as that notice is visibly posted, then the management district through either, whether it's our Houston police officer or our private security, has the permission of that property owner to ask the homeless person to remove the, himself or herself from that problem. I think, I think it, like Alice said, it has really affected, it's been a big issue lately. Um, a lot of the illegal dumping sites and trash that we're picking up is homeless related um, and cleanup. And what we, I know we, um, so a little different with our off-duty officers, I think pretty, pretty much every management district provides security. Um, each of us do a little bit differently. We have off-duty officers, Majority of them are HPD, so they're able to, like Alice said, with the affidavit and permission of the property owner, they are able to issue um, warnings for trespassing, remove individuals that are on private property. We even in areas that that we where there's an increase and and that becomes an issue, we even went and got a stencil. So we've actually stenciled the warnings on on the building with permission, <laughs> with permission, and have stenciled the no loitering or no um no loitering on on the actual building and so the police know those those are buildings we have no trespassing because management districts are deeply involved in 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 civic welfare you know management districts know as well as any other government not a crime to be homeless in houston right, right. and 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 homeless you know people experiencing homelessness uh, could be 
you know, people we know or people very much like people we know. But again, as Alice uh, mentioned, um, when they're on private property, uh, the management districts do work with those private property owners if they want the, you know, police and security patrol to help them deal with that. Now, sometimes where you have an encampment, um, again, it's legal, but if it creates either a public health nuisance or a, uh, a place where crimes take place, then, you know, inter intervention is, compassionate intervention is warranted. Right. So in one particular uh, spot in the Southwest Management District, at least one, um, the district worked to resurface the area where there was a gathering where crimes were taking place uh, so that, frankly, it would be more difficult for people to camp out there. But again, I think, you know, not speaking on behalf of every single management district, because the firm we work with doesn't consult with every single management district, but, you know, highly aware that the, the answer to the problem of homelessness in Houston is not jail, uh, it's not being chased around. It's it's uh, providing social services and permanent housing. Well, there's there's a lot of entities involved in in the homelessness um, issue, and and management districts are one um, that I I wasn't really sure how much of a of a impact that had on your operations. But the city's involved, the county's involved, and and they're also involved in economic development. So. When you look at the layers of, of local entities, how does the management district interact or work with cities and counties? Is there a lot of collaboration? Is there um, joint efforts on projects? Or what, what does that look like? We definitely, well, our, our district is all in the city. I believe Southwest is, but there's they, another districts that are not in the county, but I'm Greater North Side is all in the city of Houston. We work a lot with the city and with collaborations of trying to coordinate the cleanups and with the homeless working with HPD. So we do coordinate a lot of services. For example, our city council member, Carla Cisneros, actually uses some of her service funds to help us with an extra dumpster because we've had an increase of illegal dumping um, lately. So to help with that, we um, work with HPD as far as in cleanups, um, with our guys, if they have areas where they're in encampments, if they, for sanitary reasons, are are um, even with local businesses that are having issues, so we work very closely with them and coordinate a lot of it. So it's a hand in hand partnership. A lot, of, yes. Well, that's that's good to know that y'all are communicating and collaborating and and not necessarily duplicating. Well, no, and we the role of the management districts are to supplement services and not supplant. So we don't take over anything. We just sort of enhance or, or, or supplement the services that um, is, that would, you know, the rice thing. For those, gotcha. Yeah. Or so one, one thing that we wanted to talk about was economic equity and if management districts have a role in that. You said they're all over the city and uh, there's various, you know, neighborhoods and, and types of neighborhoods that may fall uh, in those management district areas. But these primarily focus on commercial entities, not necessarily residential entities. So can um, let's start with Alice. Could you speak to you know, the Southwest Management District and uh, if there's any um, ability for that district to impact the economic equity of the Southwest region of Houston? Yes, thank you for that great question, because as we have seen during COVID in the Southwest District, our 77036 and 77074 zip codes have indicated to us that they tested the highest in COVID, the highest in hospitalization rates. Um, I think our, our income um, per household is generally on the low side, maybe family of four is earning about $32,000. And especially during the pandemic, uh, we really have seen that it's really folks that are on the low income that have suffered the greatest. And that's why as a management district, we partner with um, strategic partners in order to provide, for example, food distributions. We distributed you know, personal protective equipment very early on during the pandemic. 
uh, gave out information on resources, uh, health information. Um, also, the census um, was very important because we wanted to make sure that in the long run, we do bring more equity in the long term to our districts in the form of programs and services and federal funding. Uh, there are there are management districts in Houston that are in wealthy areas. Um, it just so happens that again, Hawes Hill, uh, our firm, you know, which does a lot of turnkey services with management districts, does not represent them. Uh, and and like uh, the management district, Rebecca's management district on the north side, uh, these are communities that um, either haven't had a chance to rise or deserve to rise again. Uh, or are on the rise and just, you know, need more help to get there. So in many, I think in the districts that the three of us are representing here, equitability is built in because of, if, you know, we're helping the people in the community who may not have received equitable treatment in the past. The Southwest Management District is one of the districts that is the most diverse in Houston. It includes the Gandhi District, South Asian businesses, stores, restaurants. The uh, Sharpstown, which is heavily Hispanic, and unfortunately, not to associate it just with Hispanics, but Alice mentioned it had one of the most deeply uh, hurt areas for COVID. Uh, and, you know, a large Vietnamese American population and about, oh, another 50 or 60 languages that are spoken yep. in the Southwest Management District. So, you know, merely... Uh, applying all the business education materials that we provide, um, the neighborhood beautification and, and pride and upkeep. Uh, fortunately, like I said, it's kind of baked in that it's, a, that it's an equitable effort. And, and we work essentially for the boards uh, and, and the boards themselves make sure that they're equitable. So, um, so uh, really that's the sunny you know, um, aspect of working for these districts because you know we're all trying to help um, really guarantee the economic future of the city of Houston that we all know is outrageously diverse. I, I agree. I think the economic equity was sort of built in on, as I know, the, the people who went originally to our, legis our state rep who created the district, um, Representative Farrar, who's now retired, their idea was bringing some equity into the area and some services that wasn't weren't here to begin with. We are actually, you know, actually goes back to the thing, for example, we're, we're, we're able to get a federal grant and we're leveraging our federal grant with a partnership with Metro, the city of Houston and Harris County Commissioner Precinct 2 to where we're going to be redoing a whole street. Um, the oh, district wow. wouldn't happen otherwise without this partnership, without the management district, without us being able to get the federal funds. And it really, it also talks to how we collaborate with, with the different agencies, because this is a Metro, Metro City of Houston and Commission of Precinct, um, Agent Garcia, his office. So it's really going to be an incredible project and we're really excited, but it really brings something that otherwise probably wouldn't happen in the area. It sounds like management districts can be catalysts for positive change in areas across the city that wouldn't necessarily get those resources otherwise just because of economic conditions for that for that area. I, I, I agree. And um, actually behind the pocket park we talked we did the beautification is actually city property that we've taken over maintenance of, but we're also we're in the management district, we don't have a huge budget. So we're always really careful to leverage and I'm sure I think we all do that really well whether it's our nonprofit partners or other partners like the city to, to make sure we're, we're leveraging funds as responsible and um, impactful as possible. So Alan mentioned about following the lead of the board for you know, direction and projects. Um, if people are listening or watching and, and this sounds really interesting to them or they just realized that part of your management district covers their their area and they want to be involved uh how can they do that is can they go to a meeting can they sign up to join a board what what is that uh process like well all our meetings are open to the public that includes board meetings 
And we also have a series of committee meetings that anyone can participate in and have a voice in. We have the Business and Economic Development Committee, Public Safety, and also Environmental Design. So participants, other, even residents who don't pay, uh, other commercial property owners, you don't have to be a board member to have a voice with us. We have the same opportunities, um, Public Safety Committee, our Capital Improvement Project Committee, which is the, right now we're sort of working on actually drilling down to projects that will be on our capital improvement plan, we'll, what projects we'll, we'll go for next. And so there's definitely ways for them to get involved. Um, our, like I said, our board, to be a board member, you do have to be, you have to own commercial property and, and pay the income. So we'll put links up to each of your respective uh, management districts here. So if people are in those areas, they can learn more about them. And then we'll also just link to others in general. Um, you don't have to, for the Southwest one, you don't have to pay to be involved. For the greater North side, you have to be a commercial property owner to be involved. Is that correct? On the board, not to be involved. Oh, okay. Anybody can come to our, our public, and, and all our meetings are open to the public, as Alice said. They're, they're, anybody can come. Um, they can join the committees just to serve on the board. Um, gotcha. And does a management district, would it ever do anything that could impact a residential neighborhood, a street, or is this all just strictly public right away, commercial land or commercial entities? I think infrastructure work is mainly uh, handled by the tax increment reinvestment zones. And there, there are about 27 terses in the city. Southwest district is fortunate enough that we do have the Southwest Houston redevelopment authority TERS number 20. So any uh, capital projects, infrastructure work that they handle Generally, then it's up to the management district through an agreement uh, between the two. We will handle the maintenance of those projects. Gotcha. So that's another level uh, <laughs> that we're, and we're, we'll probably end up having to do an episode on Terzes just because that's a lot to get into here uh, on top of management districts, but a similar, you know, similar thing that, that we want to inform and educate on. And I, and I think, um, our district, we, you know, most of our work is on commercial corridors and, and our services are for commercial property owners and businesses. But if we, for example, we've abated um, in our existence over 25,000 sites uh, of graffiti. I think anytime or when you pick up 1.7 million pounds of trash, that affects the quality of life for everybody sure. that's living in the, in the um, businesses and residents, though. So. Well, and that's that's why we we wanted to highlight the work that y'all do because we focus on quality of life issues like housing and transportation and mobility and resiliency and transparency. But there are so many organizations out there that are doing work that directly and indirectly impact those quality of life issues. And the litany of things that y'all listed off that you're doing tie into those directly. Uh, and and a lot of people don't realize that management districts are out there. And, and I think the really neat thing, and, and I, I'll let Alan talk about this, but each management, there's some management, we're basically all the same, but each of them are, we're each a little different. I think we all do security and graffiti and, but for example, um, East Aldi, which I think Alan was going to, you know, mm -hmm. is actually an, a setup a little bit different. And they're able to do some things that we're not able to do, just like Uptown. So we're a little, but uniquely, we're we're providing those those basic services that do affect the quality of life. Yes, um, East Aldine, thank you, Rebecca, is one of seven management districts that uh, Halls Hill serves, and um, because it is an economically depressed area with a tremendous number of hardworking people and a great history, but nevertheless economically depressed, it's just southeast of uh, Bush Airport. Um, uh, be, because of that need and because the revenue structure is slightly different in that almost all of the district lies outside the city and therefore, uh, but in East Aldine, uh, people pay the same sales tax they would to be in the city and that extra, but again, very small amount goes to the management district. 
Well, the management district built the East Aldine Town Center, which currently houses a Lone Star College campus, social service agencies such as the Hope Clinic and Baker Ripley, uh, and the Sheriff's Office uh, hardened structure in which they do their 911 dispatch that is um, not susceptible to storms or floods it's because it has to be. Right. Uh, and and it's also an office building is uh, almost done. And then the last leg that's already been leased before it's built is for commercial operations. In other words, you know, the first really new uh, multi-use, except for residential, uh, uh, land uh, real estate development on a large scale that East Alden has seen. And guess what? Across the street, there's already a copycat like Bucky's place that's already opened up because they know they're going to be able to sell a lot of gasoline and, and a lot of uh, sugar-covered peanuts to, um, yep. to the students and everybody else. So it's already creating a ripple effect. And it's an unusual thing, but something that East Alden's very proud of. East Alden also created a committee called the East Alden Arts Council, which just had the first two mini murals by UpArt. Um, it's a more a site that Northside's much more used to, seeing these painted and decorated signal boxes. But the first two just came to all to East Alden because of this management district committee. Uh, uh, convincing the board to allot the funds to get it done. So, so you know, just like my favorite kids, they're all my favorite districts, but East Aldine is the one where you actually see more of the direct effect of the management district than you would in other places where it's more so. I will have to say, Apart Studio actually resides, uh, they live in, in Northside. You so go we claim them as a Northside, as Northsiders. And we've actually done a lot of projects with them, like you said, the mini murals, which are the, the artwork on utility boxes. And actually, I think we have a map on our website of all the utility boxes. As, as some of them have been done by Council Member Cisneros, um, Avenue. We partnered with Avenue to do some. And they just are great ways to um, reflect the, the, the community and sort of brighten up the streets. And um, they're really cool. And we actually just painted with up art a project on Cal on cross timbers and 45 where he painted the column um, on the underpass. Um, and now, so I'll give you a little, I'll give, sorry, I'll give you a little teaser. The arts committee in East Aldine uh, is discussing uh, creating signs that say, imagine art here, mm -hmm. uh, which, um, you know, obviously that's a place where they hope to put the next public art, but the initials for imagine art here, are IAH, which is the code, for Bush Intercontinental Airport. Yeah. So synergy, people. Synergy. Well, that that whole East Aldine example is just a perfect way to show how this can be a catalyst for change in a community. Just all the buildings that are coming in, the retail, the art, I mean, improved uh services, improved security. Uh that's 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 a great example. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, and I, I want to thank all of y'all for participating because I think we've been able to shed some light on a management district and and what it is they can do, how they can have an impact and, and give folks information so that they can learn more and get involved. Um, what we're going to do now is move to our very last section of the podcast, which is called Houston, We Have a Problem. Okay, right. we've had a problem here. This is Houston, say again, please. All right, so we're going to ask you all a hypothetical, and uh, it'll be we'll just go down the line, Alice, Rebecca, Allen, to uh, get, get your response and your feedback. So you might have heard Elon Musk is creating a city in Texas, in South Texas. It's called Starbase, and it'll be located near all of the Tesla facilities, but he's creating a brand new city from scratch, and he has hired the three of y'all to lead up his economic development efforts. So you have a brand new city, you have the unlimited resources uh, of Mr. Musk. What would be your one thing to either implement or, or advise him on for this brand new city with regards to the economic development? Uh, that question. Um, well, I guess, first of all, 
just something that is going to accommodate such a myriad of people. I mean, we have different cultures, different languages. So just to be inclusive in that manner. Okay. Rebecca? I, I think um, I would encourage him. I think we, we, we see this every year when Stephen Kleinberg's um, survey of Houston comes up. People want a walkable, pedestrian-friendly, bike-friendly. So I would say really sort of begin with the foundation and building block of infrastructure of having houses and wide streets and a walkable community that allows for development to occur in a really sort of um, diverse and, and cool way that people want people want to gather and easy access. So I think I would really sort of concentrate first on getting that infrastructure right. All right. My answer is uh, similar in that, um, yeah, it would be a great tourist attraction in Texas, but when you're talking about uh, blasting off to uh, leave the earth temporarily, keep in mind what's what what the earth is you're looking at, and that is that it's not about Texans or the United States. It, hopefully it will attract people from around the world, so to be, be ready for that. Houston kind of accidentally became uh, you know a place where we represent the whole world. This can be one that that does so on purpose. And one other suggestion for people to get there. Mr. Musk should uh, provide us all with the electric vehicles we need to uh, arrive there. And he apparently can afford to pay for that. We might even get a, a hyperloop to his new city. Who knows? Well, thank you all so much for taking time to chat with us and, and educate us on, on management districts. I think this was very informative and really appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you. you. We've just finished our conversation with our fantastic panel of guests, Rebecca Reyna, Alice Lee, Alan Bernstein. Thank you all again so much for being here. And this topic is, is so fascinating because it's, it's something that people don't know much about, but impacts everything from public art to safety to trash pickup to graffiti abatement. Uh, these are things that impact people's neighborhoods and and people's uh, lives in a direct way. And if you're interested in learning more or getting involved with a management district, uh, check out this website here. It'll provide you more information. And don't forget to check out our website, www.yourhue.com. We have all of our episodes, all of our resources, and you can find out about what we're doing across the city. Thank you again, and we'll see you next time.